Hi guys, we're pumped for opening night. We have a show for you that's all about enjoying movies without you having to leave the comfort of your home and deal with annoying people opening. Um... Sorry, Jane, what are you doing? Sorry, it's just opening night and I'm nervous, so I'm just having a snack. Okay, <laughs> all right. Anyway, as I was saying, the great thing about tonight's show is you can enjoy movies without having to deal with... John, what the hell is that? Everyone's got their thing, bro. <laughs> well, in that case, maybe we should just get on with it and show oh, me the movie! movie. Welcome to the show where we celebrate our love of movies. Because we all love movies, right? Yeah! yeah! That did not sound like you were prompted at all. <laughs> I do. Oh, guys, I love movies. And I have done ever since I was a kid when I saw Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi and thought, well, hello, puberty. <laughs> I love all sorts of movies. I love the big blockbusters. I love the small indie movies, the big indie movies, like mainly Raiders of the Lost Ark. I was even happy with the results of the Academy Awards. In fact, I waited with bated breath to see if the movie about the lady who had sex with a fish man would win Best Picture, <laughs> which, incidentally, waiting with bated breath was how the lady enticed the fish man to have sex with her in the first place. <laughs> Facts! Movie facts! Let's meet our players tonight. She's interviewed all the major stars in showbiz. It's Angela Bishop. Yeah! He's a comedian who will start on stage and screen. It's Frank Woodley! Yeah! And over here, we've got a comedy triple threat nailing it on TV, movies and the stage. Comedian Tegan Higginbotham. Yeah. He's the Australian superstar of Strictly Ballroom. It's Paul Mercurio. Yeah. And their team captain, she's an actress that excels at drama and comedy. It's Jane Harbour. Yeah. Joel, how are you feeling? What a great team you've assembled tonight. I know, I'm feeling, Show one. I'm feeling very strong. We've got Frank Woodley, the one and only. Round of applause. Yeah. But I think we've got a secret weapon here. We, we do, and just because, just to make you feel more at home, Angela, oh. I brought you the chicken oh. microphone. Yes. Now I can be myself. Now I can be... You were talking about The Shape of Water winning was, Best Oscar. Was. I was a big fan of that too. The woman who had sex with the fish man. Yes. Our nickname for it was actually Grinding Nemo. <laughs> Well, Jane, how are you feeling on this side? There's some tough talk coming from your opposition tonight, I know, Jane. it's a lot of tough talk. Are you feeling talk. confident? Well, we've just finished memorising the whole of IMDb, so I think we're good. <laughs> and especially with this, my favourite man in the entire world. Call me page 173. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, you know, it's such a thrill as well, Jane, friend of mine, to be facing off against you every week. I think you're so beautiful and talented. Same, and, um, same with you. Thank you. I thought, I'm so happy you won the Gold Logie for Offspring. Oh, oh, wait, that wasn't you, Dad. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's actually very upsetting, and um, I just don't want to do the show anymore, oh, so... Yeah. That's right, acting. Oh. <laughs> I was on Neighbours, Jane. I was on Neighbours. Time for our first round, where we discover Hollywood isn't perfect. I know, what a surprise, right? This is called Movie Mistake. <laughs> so I'm about to show you some clips from some famous films, and all of them contain mistakes. What our teams have to do is spot them. This is from Back to the Future 3, everyone's favourite movie about a young man trying not to make out with his mum. <laughs> Team Jane, here is your first mistake. Yeah. Keep your eyes yeah. peeled, guys. Now it's a race. Of course it's a race. But what does that mean? It means your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. Both of you. Did you see what was, yeah. what was going on? One of the young male actors, he tries to what? gesture for the camera to move in close was to him. That, no, that's the lunch. toilet as a child. Yeah, and oh. then he starts pointing at his crush. He said he asked the camera to move he does, in. He does a bit of this. That makes thing. it sound like you're going, hey, oh, this okay. is where the... <laughs> He's calling like, help, he's like, like, yeah, I need to go to the bath. I think that's the signal for I need to go to the bath. Okay, right now I just need to get clear. Does that okay. mean, if you could, does please. that mean that, um, you know, the Bruce Lee, like, he really needs to go to the toilet? Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. I'm confused. Yeah. So what I'm getting from this is whatever the motivation, 
There is a child pointing downstairs. It means your future hasn't been written yet. <laughs> you are correct. One point. Poor little guy. Yeah. He's obviously quite upset and he's very serious and everything, but there's something about his face that it's quite creepy in a way, yeah. isn't it? Because he's sort of like going, he's like going. <laughs> What happens is they do multiple takes of yeah. these things. And if he's in the background, he's got to make sure. But they can't always stop for toilet breaks. I mean, you know, I've wet myself three times since we started this show. <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Team Joel, you are up next. Your mistake is from the movie Commando. Not only the name of a very popular Arnie film, but also how I like to hang on the weekends. <laughs> Take a look. Rocket launcher. Go! Oh. <laughs> yes. I felt like possibly the mistake that happened in that thing was mm. maybe in the middle of it, Arnie thought, maybe I could host The Apprentice when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> You would have met him, right, Angela? I have, yeah, many times. In fact, my shoes, which I don't know if you can see, have skulls on them. Okay, so it's got go. a skull. It's interviewing Arnie at, uh, in Berlin for, for the latest Terminator installment. Right. And he had a giant skull ring, got down on his knees, oh. and he was oh. trying to get the skull ring on his finger to kiss the skull on my shoe. <laughs> Here, and it just looked 50 shades of <laughs> rock. It does kind of feel like if there were two superheroes from another dimension or something, <laughs> but that's how they would activate Perhaps. their something or something. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I was once bitten by a radioactive spider. Yeah, what happened? And I jumped off a building and just, well, it didn't work out well. <laughs> did you spot it, though? Do you know what I the mistake was? I think I spotted it. What okay. do you think, Joe? Cool. No, because no? I didn't. I think, um, what's the person that um, does continuity on a show? Continuity. <laughs> The continuity person didn't do the job because I think they he got the the gun the machine launcher yeah and um and uh, and then you shoot back and then it's back on the wall. Did I explain that well? Ah uh, yes. So he's taken a weapon off the wall. Yes. That when they cut back is back on the wall. It's back on the wall. Ah. Okay, let's take a look. Go takes it off the wall. That's taken off a wall. Clearly. Right. But then back on the wall. He's done it. Oh well. Wow. There you go. We're all making fun of Joel. He does say rocket launcher. Rocket very launcher. gently, by the way. That was the gentlest I've ever heard. Very Arnie gentle speak. line. Normally it's very like, get in the chopper! <laughs> this is like, rocket launcher. <laughs> Go, if that's okay with you. <laughs> what was that accent? I don't know where that was. That was Back to you, Team Jane. Let's see if you can spot the movie mistake from Pretty Woman, the movie where Julia Roberts says she doesn't kiss on the mouth. Little known fact, neither do I. So back off, Artie Sharon! <laughs> You've had too many champagnes and too many warnings! <laughs> what mistake? A million dollars? Yes. Wow. You must be really smart, huh? <sighs> I only got through 11th grade. How far did you go in school? I went all the way. Your folks must be really proud, huh? Pretty obvious. It was pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. I think Julia hadn't eaten in maybe four or five years. Right. Um, <laughs> and just was was shoveling in. Anything. Anything. Croissants. Are they called pikelets? Yeah, pikelets. Yeah. yeah, pikelets. And the continuity person, continuity person, <laughs> um, wasn't there. See, I... So what are you saying? I'm she's... saying that she was eating a croissant at the beginning and then a pikelet, but it could have just been very I think that's so quick. reasonable. Like, you know, say something to somebody, they start talking, you go num, 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 num. Like, that's just... <laughs> that's how we all eat, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's see, is Jane's team right? I only got through 11th grade. How far did you go in school? Oh. There you go. <laughs> Just, Danish to pikelets. I still think it's a reasonable speed for food eating, but okay. <laughs> right. Okay, back to Team Joel. This one is yours. Uh, well, technically, it's Paul's. Oh. Because we're about to see one from Strictly Ballroom. If you haven't seen it, what a, this was groundbreaking. Made for $3 million. It took in $80 million at the box office. How, How does that make you, you feel? Get? I didn't get a cent. <laughs> <laughs> it All right. would be so good if in this clip it was you going... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Let's see if you can spot the mistake. Enjoy this moment back in time. Oh! What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Very <laughs> high pants on and a jock strap. When you're at home looking in the mirror, do you ever just go? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Okay, guys, did you spot the movie mistake? I... I didn't. I think I did. Ooh. It's always a danger when you're filming with mirrors. Uh -huh. And I think we could see the camera filming the scene in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so the camera that is actually filming the Indeed. shot... Is reflected, is reflected in the mirror. In and then the mirror. Angela's there behind her going, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Yeah, the cameraman is like filming it, just going, "Oh, this shot, this shot looks perfect. Lighting's <laughs> immaculate. Set looks great. Actors are nailing their choreo." Oh, wait a minute! Some dickheads put a camera in the shot. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Bye bye. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the first round. Team scores are Team Jane on two. <laughs> Team Joel also on two. Hey. Back in a minute. Here on Show Me the Movie. Now, I love a good guessing game. Everything from guess who to lying in bed and wondering if someone's downstairs trying to steal my Pez collection. <laughs> yeah, guys, I have a Pez collection. <laughs> well, we have a guessing game, and surprise, it's movie-themed, and it's called The Unusual Suspects. <laughs> Teams, the rules of this game are simple. On our Unusual Suspects board are five well-known male actors. All we want you to do is place them in order of their height. First up is going to be you, Team Jane. So your celebrities are Daniel Radcliffe. I love him. Chris Hemsworth, Danny DeVito, Liam Hemsworth, and Tom Cruise. The clock will be ticking. Who's going to uh, be moving your heads, Jane? Would you like to do it, Paul? I would love oh, to. Thank okay, you. Right, let's get some head work going on. <laughs> your time starts now. <laughs> Does it depend on what movie he's in? Because he was pretty short in the first one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I made a gag. There we go. <laughs> uh, also, is it with heels or no heels for Tom? Oh, good question. Oh, very good. Yeah, we'll take him off, I reckon, and... Uh... We'd all agree, though, that Danny's, Danny's smallest. Danny's obviously got to be Danny's the smallest. The smallest. <laughs> okay. And then I think we go Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe second. Then... Do have well, I reckon it's got to be what? him. The problem is Definitely these two. Definitely Tom. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a toss-up between... Um... Liam. Oh, guys, isn't it always? <laughs> 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 Because Chris looks bulkier. <laughs> no, no, no! Now, here's the thing, guys. If you are wrong, mm -hmm. I will give you the chance to change them. You were thinking of changing some of them, weren't you? Let me see what you've got. You've got, so you... Just flipping the, the hems. All right, let's have a look. You've got Danny DeVito first, Daniel Radcliffe, Tom Cruise, mm. Liam Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, you you are not correct. What? You are not correct, but... You do have three of them right. So, okay. if you want, if you want, Please. Paul Vicurio, let me finish. <laughs> With an extra 15 seconds, I will let you rearrange the faces. But remember this, if you are rearranging the wrong faces, you might end up with less. Right now, you have three. You can take those three points, or I'll give you an extra 15 seconds, and good luck. Oh, and the clock starts. When I say <laughs> now. Great. Thank you, Jane. Um, Thank you, Jane. Put them. That's all you want to do? Yeah. That's all you want to do? No, to keep them. You know what would be hilarious? Because you thought it was these two yeah. the whole time. I didn't. So you ha I told you you had three right. I want to make it very clear you had three right. I'm Until so you moved to the Hemsworths, now. right? Stop it. Until you moved the Hemsworths. <laughs> they wouldn't let me move, Tom. Good. They are correct. You got all five right. Oh, my God. Daddy I'm 
the veto. 1.47 metres, so tall enough to be a man, but not short enough to be magical. It's a, it's a horrible <laughs> place to be. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, 1.65 metres. It's nearly as tall as a wand. That's great. Tom Cruise, 1.7. I've got five centimetres on you, mate! <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, 1.9 metres. Liam Hemsworth, 1.91. Oh. And I, I just realised where I was pointing, and I apologise. <laughs> you know what? I don't apologise. I don't apologise at all. All right, now it's Team Joel's turn. We have rearranged our celebrity faces. You are going to be doing actresses. Sigourney Weaver, Elizabeth Debicki, Kristen Bell, Charlize Theron, Isla Fisher. <laughs> OK, Joel, who's going to be uh, rearranging your heads? I mean, the bish. Okay, the bitch. The bitch. Okay, and your time starts now. Um, Angela, just do it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll get to discussion. Kristen Bell and Isla are the two littlies. Are they? Yeah, yes. absolutely. But Kristen Bell's in Frozen. I don't yeah. know why that's logic. Never mind. <laughs> Keep going. Isla's married to Sasha Baron Cohen. Yes. And, and then there's a total gulf between them, height-wise. Awesome. So I'm thinking we certainly need to put the alien lady over here. <laughs> I'm going to go Isla. Really? Is she okay. that short? She's really little. And, and this is and then Elizabeth she's, she's Kylie size. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. talking my language oh. now. And then... <laughs> she Charlize, is Charlize very tall. Is that shot. I don't think that... Oh, never mind. The time is up. I'm not entirely comfortable with that. And you got one right. Oh, Only geez. one. So, the big question is... How embarrassing. Take the one. Do you want to take <laughs> the take one? Take the one. Do the... So, I can give you another 15 to rearrange. You only have one of them correct, so a lot of work to do. I take it, Joel, you're going to take the 15 seconds? Yeah, no. we're going to take the... Okay, you know start what? the clock. Maybe, Off you go. Maybe I should... No, I right. Maybe Vicky, you should. Apparently. I was just uh, thinking... Okay. But I'm just going to go Trump. like this. <gasps> You reckon? You reckon Sigourney's that tall? Yeah, yeah. she's tall. Yeah. Tall? The whole alien. The whole alien came out. Oh, that's right. OK, we've got it. You never need it. You went from one point... Oh, my God, guys. Five. You got it right. You got it right. Yeah, Kristen Bell, uh, 155 centimetres. Isla Fisher, 161. Charlize Theron, 177. Sigourney Weaver, 180 on the bar. And Elizabeth Becky, 1.9. That's Hemsworth size, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Our scores at the end of that round. Team Jane on seven. Team Joel also on seven. Describe a film without knowing any of the facts. And if you like giant robots, giant alien creatures, and giant hunky Hollywood stars, you better hang around because Pacific Rim Uprising Scott Eastwood isn't far away. Back in a minute. <laughs> As we crack on with our next game, it's called... You know that movie where... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, audience, applauding a game that you've never seen before. <laughs> oh, I like this one. <laughs> Teams, you are going to have to describe the plots to some well-known movies. All your teammates have to do is try to guess the title. But the catch is you can't say the title of the movie, the names of any actors or any characters in it. Team Jane, you will be up first. I will hand you your card. <laughs> the clock will start ticking. Okay. When you hear this sound... <laughs> there's a fire. Evacuate the building. <laughs> when you do hear that sound, hand the cards to your next teammate. And then you keep going until you hear this sound... <laughs> uh, when you hear that sound, round is over. Uh, good luck. Good luck, Jane. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Your time starts now. The person who was in this recently passed away. Oh, sorry. Was Great a comedian. Start. Great start. Oh, Great start, Jane. Great start. Um, Too soon, Jane. Um, 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 yes, but oh, puts on a lot of different outfits. Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, yes. 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 Um, okay, terrible film with, oh. <laughs> with Jenny from the block. She's in New York City. What is the island called? Made in Manhattan. Made in yes. Manhattan. Yes, there yes, you go. Yes. Okay. It's an amazing Australian iconic film. It's not yours. Go, Paul. Come um, on. Oh, oh, it's, um, dug myself a hole. Red put it in the pool room. Oh, move on to the next go, one. Go, go. It was the castle, it was the castle. I'll take that one away, Paul. Uh, okay, go, go, go. go, go. Uh, you remember the film where they went out on the water yeah. and then... Jaws. Titanic. 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 Yeah. Okay, this is a... Um, uh, you remember that movie where uh, they had a lot a lot of characters, a, a lot of characters, Any and they're all black and white. It was film. a cartoon, black and white. Oh, okay. so good. 
Fantastic. Lots and lots of characters. <laughs> Not just characters, Blanket. what are they? Dogs. There you go. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to... I, oh I got mad, God. Paul. Go I'm not angry at you, I'm angry at the situation. Listen to the rhythm, don't be scared. <laughs> uh, remember that movie where things came down from outer space? War no, they didn't come down from outer space. They didn't. Uh, you can play... Oh, pass. 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 Gremlins, pass. it was Gremlins. Pass. Okay, pass. remember that? <laughs> Ten seconds. You stand too close. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Way too close. close. He was standing too close okay. to me. That's, remember that movie when the... Okay, is this people... a film about a psycho? I don't know what's no, going on. No, they came down from space. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind oh, is what that one was. Okay, sure. Okay, it, uh, it's that film where David Bowie is pretty damn hot. Can't, say, can't so say the name. Can't oh, say the name. Okay. Labyrinth. It is, damn it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the film where there's some pretty great stunts and there's a little bit of this. Oh, oh the Matrix. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to run away and you have to follow, follow me. Follow me. <laughs> Kate, Kate. 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 Yes. Kate. I know what this film is and Kate. Um... Catch a. Oh, catch, 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 catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Well done. Good job. 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 Good job.
we're going to say that John John yep. turned down Forrest Gump. Oh, OK. Sure. So yeah. what do you think Will Smith then? Well, Frank, you're a huge Will Smith fan, aren't you? Oh, massive. I've got my whole house um, wallpapered with images of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm getting the vibe it's a great that, idea. that I reckon maybe the, the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so you are saying Will Smith knocked back The, the Matrix? Matrix? Yes. John Travolta knocked back Forrest Gump. Yep. And Paul Hogan knocked back the role in Ghost. Yeah. Mm. How thankful is Demi Moore if that's the case? All right. <laughs> let's, let's lock that in. All right. Just... You are absolutely correct! Oh, yeah. So... Will Smith did not knock back the role of Neo in The Matrix. He read the script and said he didn't understand the concept, but then went on to make Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, John Travolta said no to Forrest Gump and Paul Hogan said no to Ghost. Which is a shame. Oh, Paul Hogan in Ghost. Like, you're dead. That's not a life. This is a life. That would have been great. Here we go. OK. Team Jane, here's your turn. When famous people have all the money, they can buy whatever animals they want. And our next group of actors have some very curious tastes in pets. Reese Witherspoon. Leonardo DiCaprio. And our very own Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Here are their pets. A tortoise. That is a tortoise, don't panic, it is. <laughs> it is a tortoise. Alpacas. Okay. And a donkey. <laughs> Who has what? Okay. I think if we're just to go on, you know, when owners start to look like their pets. <laughs> <laughs> How could that possibly go wrong, Jane Harbour? I think that's a perfect way of working it out. Well, no. So case... I would go Nikki Kidman with the alpaca. <laughs> Do you know Nicole? Do I know Nicole? You just called her Nikki. That feels like you know each other. I just feel like that would be her her Nick, nickname. Imagine Nikki. It feels just so wrong. Nikki Kid. Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> So at the moment, it seems like you're going with Nicole Kidman and Tor. Oh, we've got to go okay. to the group. I think. Let's Paul... start with Reese. Okay. What does she look like? She would have. Reese, I don't know. I kind of feel. I know that she has a big farm. Alpaca, llama, that one. Sure. She got stabbed okay. once. Did you hear about that? Oh, Reese no. got stabbed. Reese with a spoon? No, no with a no, knife. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Surgical procedure. I feel like tortoise. For Leo's. It's a manish thing. Do you want to see it? rides around it in the backyard. Definitely. More? And that looks like a manish thing. No, that's a thing. big one. <laughs> I'm going to need an answer, guys. Come on, let's go. Reese Witherspoon and. Sure. Reese with the. Uh, Donkey. Uh, with the. Nicole, Nikki Kid. With, <laughs> the, <laughs> with the alpacas. With the alpacas? Um, Sounds like a, a game of Cluedo. <laughs> Nicole Kidman with Leo. the alpacas yeah, yeah, in yeah. the conservatory. <laughs> Leo D with the. <laughs> the, the tortoise. Yep. yep. And then Reesey, Reesey, Reesey has a donkey. Reesey Peasy. Reesey Peasy with the old donkey. Okay. Wait for it. There we go. Yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. They are absolutely correct. <gasps> that is yeah. it. Reese, not only has one donkey, has two donkeys called Honky and Tonky. <laughs> and I pray one of them talks like Eddie Murphy. How awesome would that be? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio has a tortoise. And Nicole Kidman, yes, has alpacas because she says they're pretty and they have long eyelashes. Oh my god. Which was also, I think, they're also how she fell in love with Keith Urban as well. Wait. <laughs> now it's time to find out just how focused our contestants are with eyes wide open. In 2013, Academy Award winner Guillermo del Toro directed the blockbuster movie Pacific Rim, a hugely entertaining film about giant robots fighting giant monsters from the sea called Kaiju. Guess what the movie was, guys? Awesome. I loved it. It was everything I want in a movie about giant robots fighting giant monsters. <laughs> Fast forward to today and the sequel Pacific Rim Uprising is out now in theatres across Australia. It stars John Boyega from Star Wars and the son of Clint Eastwood, Scott Eastwood and teams... I'm going to need you to watch very closely this trailer because you're about to be asked questions about it. Let's enter the world of Pacific Rim Uprising. Cadets, you better gear up. How'd they get into our world? Someone let them in. Someone from our world. Who is that? Definitely not one of ours. There are pilots we remember as legends, but they didn't start out that way. 
They started out like us. Jaeger pilots, do you understand? One way to find out. Here is your first question. Fingers on buzzers. Three girls run in front of one of the monsters. What are they wearing? School uniforms. Yeah. Yes, school uniforms wow. is correct. Of course they are. Look. Oh. The newspaper article includes a picture of which actor? Idris Elba. Yes. It was Idris Elba, correct. Chris Scott Eastwood's character addresses the troops by saying, Cadets, you better... Yes? Make my day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wrong Eastwood. I'm afraid that's the oh. wrong Eastwood. No. <laughs> you better what? Up. Plate up. No. <laughs> Get him out. That's a great, that would gear be a great up, episode of Better Master gear up. Jeff. Better gear, gear up, up is correct. There you go. Cadets, <laughs> you better gear up. <laughs> then he said, make my day. Then he said, make my day. Okay. Can you name two of the four weapons that the robots were holding? Oh. It was clearly the, the zapper and the blaster. Yeah. <laughs> How, kind what of, kind of question is that? Well, there was a sword, How there's a know spinning what the weapons are they, that they're using? They're very the, clearly... You didn't use the whip. And, there's a whip. There was a whip. There was a whip. You didn't even see there the whip. There wasn't a whip. There was a whip. Was a whip. I'll give you a point each. A point Yay. each. A sword, there's a spinning mace, electric whip and electric claw. Look, see, there you go. Or lemon uh, juicer. Yeah. So, lemon <laughs> juicer. Hang one on. point for hang me on, for lemon on. juicer. Hang on. You call that the electric claw, <laughs> and then you get a point. Yeah. But if I call it a blaster, <laughs> it's like, no, you <laughs> but it was actually not. At the end of that round, Team Jane is on 19 points, and Team Joel are on 21 points. I caught up with the star of Pacific Rim Uprising, Scott Eastwood, and son of Clint, and a man so handsome he nearly gave me cataracts to cope. So, <laughs> take it away, me. Thanks, me. You look great tonight, by the way. Thank you. Nailing it. Oh. <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> I'm here with Scott Eastwood, the star of Pacific Rim Uprising. Welcome back to the country. Of course, Pacific Rim's back, which means giant Jaeger robots are protecting the world from bad sure. guys. Your character, Nate, is one of the uh, Jaeger robot pilots. Mm -hmm. You saying yes to this movie was pretty much, you had me a pilot. Would that be fair to say? Because that's what you do. I am a pilot. I am. They also had me at Australia. No, I suck up. Good job. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. I did. I lived down here when I was uh, in my early 20s. So when they said, hey, we're going to shoot down here, I said, oh, that sounds pretty good. Did you get to pilot at all while you are here? Or is it because, like, we fly on the other side of the sky? <laughs> the other side of the yeah, sky? Yeah, you know, like the opposite side of the sky. <laughs> no, I joke. didn't fly at, while I was down here. Your Jaeger robot suits, the pilot suits, how the hell do you go to the toilet in one of those things? How have you not thought We of got this? special zippers. Oh, yeah. Pacific Rim Uprising is in cinemas now. Please thank its star, Scott Eastwood! <laughs> This game is designed to put some of the movie world's greatest myths to the test. For example, did you know a rag soaked in chloroform won't knock someone out in seconds? Which I found out the hard way with Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> he put up a hell of a fight. He's very strong. Very strong. <laughs> Tonight we're testing out a scene that you see lots in movies about cat burglars. You know the ones where they duck and dive through a security system of laser beams to grab a priceless object? Check it out. We're ready. Yes. Yes. Ready to steal that priceless styrofoam head. But how hard is it really? We're about to find out. Teams, welcome to our exact copy of the famous scene from the track. 
Just like in heist movies, I want our contestants to make their way through the course, come down through here, grab the crown jewels. G'day, folks. <laughs> without touching the lasers. If you do, a bell will ring. Catherine Zeta-Jones was able to do it blindfolded, but unlike Catherine, our teens won't be blindfolded and won't have a creepy old man leering at them. In my defence, I'm only 44. <laughs> the team with the least bell rings at the end will be the winners. Oh, and to make it extra tricky, the clock is ticking. And don't forget, our security guard, Mr Limpet, will be watching. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Team Jane, who is going to be going through the lasers? You guys are up first. Oh, uh, Tegan, I guess because she's dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Might help. All right, make it right now. Here you go. And this is, it's the whole scene, though. That whole scene was bollocks. It was just put in the film so we could, like, do crash zooms on Catherine zeta Jones's butt. What? Like, are you it was. kidding me? You're almost <laughs> suggesting that's why we wanted to air it, too. I know. <laughs> so, Tegan, you look like the nicest cat burglar ever. Like, if, uh, <laughs> if you break into my house, like, girl, you want a Pinot Grigio? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, this first one, I feel like this is pretty, like, oh, my God, I've okay, lifted my leg. Right, I'm stepping Catherine over. Jones. Um, okay, I would go through the middle just, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You let her know if there's one above, 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 above you. Yeah, yeah, yeah watch your arm. Watch your right arm. Okay, okay, now what? Now what? Oh, I would go oh, now it's Because I'm going to be honest, I want to go here. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can't. You can't. Okay. There's a bell. Also, I would tuck in the drawstring of your tracksuit pants. Yes. Oh, okay. And also and helping Team Captain Jane. Right. This, is, down, this down, is the glamorous way I wanted to... And wiggle, yeah. wiggle, 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 wigg
swampy mask. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the, clock. Oh. the two people who were in Oddball <laughs> could not get the answer right about Oddball. <laughs> One point for me. Finish this Steven Spielberg movie, The Colour. Yes, Purple. Team Jog Purple is correct. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and... And villainy. And villainy from Star Wars A New Hope. Whose baby was the offspring of the devil? Oh. Yes. Team Jane. It was Angela's. Oh, no. no. Rosemary's. It was Rosemary's oh, baby, right. correct. Charlie <laughs> Chaplin's first full-length film, the 1921 classic The Kid, helped launch the career of which Hollywood child star? Jackie Coogan. Jackie Coogan, who went on to play? Um, F Fester, Uncle Fester. Uncle Fester and the other family, nice. How many bridesmaids' dresses has Catherine? Yes. 27. 27 is correct, Catherine. <laughs> Furious action, I can tell you that the final scores are... Jane's team, 27 points. Joel's team, 26 points. Well done, Team Jane. A basta for you. Commiserations, Team Joel. A Razzie for you. Thank tonight's guest, Tegan Higginbotham. Next week, till then, I'm Roy McManus. Say hi to your mum for me. Good luck!